All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk. Of course, this is the show we cover the swag inside and out. I'm your tour guide around the swag. Sea Wells coming at you. And we are continuing our 12 team previews. Uh, we are on team number 11. And that team is the Texas Southern Tigers. And we have one more preview to do before we complete this series. And then it is on to our week zero preview which will be dropping probably Friday before the game, um, August 23rd. We'll probably be dropping then. Um, then we have a recap of the MEAC Swag Challenge on Sunday, August 25th. And then we'll be into week one. You know, we'll have our week one preview. I think we'll break it up into three parts. Um, probably drop the first part on, when, on the Wednesday before the Thursday games. Drop the second part on the Friday before the Saturday games. And then... Um, Drop the uh, third part on Sunday before the um, before the Orange Blossom Classic. Uh, this is Nala. I don't know y'all can see her. This is a a a, a white unspotted jaguar. Uh, this is my this is my girl. She uh, wanted to join since we talking about tigers. She wanted to join and talk about these these TSU tigers. Um, what a season for TSU last year, man! And not in a good way when I say that. Um, this was a team who didn't really live up to what the expectations were as Nala walks around again. But before we get into that, man, let's go ahead and make sure y'all hit those socials, Facebook and Swag Talk, Instagram, Swag Talk, Twitter, Swag Talk 76. Uh, like the video, share it, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. And thank you to everybody who, who has subscribed during this series. Um, I appreciate that. And I hope you guys stick around. Um, for the actual season because we, like I said, we're going to be doing weekly previews and recaps and we also are going to be having our HBCU top 10 that we're going to do. Um, we're also probably going to have a, a, a separate top 10 um, through Swag Smoke. So there's a lot going on. Y'all make sure y'all check that out. And of course, Swag Smoke live on Thursday, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. That's that's everything we have right now. And of course, there's always other things dropping um, out of the blue. So if you do subscribe, hit that notification bell to be alerted to everything that drops. Or if you're curious, just um, mainly hit the Twitter, uh, Swag Talk 76. That's where a lot of my stuff is. So y'all make sure y'all hit that and um, keep keep going like that. So like I said, let's talk TSU football. This team um, had a disappointing season, to say the least. Um, came into the season uh, with a lot of expectations. This was a team that a lot of people felt could win the West Division um, early, you know, in 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 the preseason, uh, summertime, and all of that. TSU was a hot name um, to win the West. They, you know, they were a serious dark horse to a lot of people, and it was not without, you know, it, it was not for a good. It was not unfounded. Um, this was a team who had built up over the previous seasons. You know, had took their lumps and had. Been a more experienced team, um, probably the one of the most experienced teams that TSU has had in a long time, and a lot of talent. Just could not, you know, just, everything just kind of after the first game, uh, Andrew Body would not play again at TSU, and Jace Wilson would step in and, and and do an admirable admirable job winning the Swag Newcomer of the Year. Uh, Ladarius Owens would become the best back in the league. And, you know, their defense led by Jacob Williams was was solid. Uh, they just had issues with depth and, you know, and and be, not being able to close out games. They had quite a few games that they were either leading or could have taken the lead late and just, you know, let the games get away from them. Um, they did, you know, they did have a few games where, you know, they, they scored a few points. They put 44 up on all corn. Uh, they hit Kirby for 34 in a loss. Um, they also scored 34 against Bethune Cookman. So, and uh, 34 against Pine Bluff in an inexplicable loss. Uh, this team ultimately will finish uh, three and three and eight and uh, two and five uh, overall. I mean, two and five in conference, uh, two and six in com two and six in conference, um, three and si three and eight overall. Just could not really, you know, could not really get anything going when you look at this team. Offensively, they were, you know, they were. This was a pretty solid team offensively, fifth in scoring offense at 26.2 points per game. That we leveled in scoring defense at 32.7 points per game. Uh, total offense, 
They were uh, fifth at 372 yards per game, averaged 5.9 yards per play, which was the second highest in the league. Uh, they scored 35 total touchdowns, which was fifth in the league. Uh, to- total defense, they were ninth with 379 yards per game, giving up 5.2 yards per play. Uh, and they allowed 46 total touchdowns, which w- was the worst in the league. Uh, they led the league in rushing at 190 yards per game, 20 touchdowns, 5.3 yards per carry. That 5.3 yards per carry was the best in the league by almost a, almost a full yard. Uh, they their, their running game was spectacular, led by Ladarius Owens. Uh, the 22, 20, 20 touchdowns was the, the fourth highest. Uh, their rushing defense was 11th at 176 yards per game. 28 total touchdowns, they allowed 4.1. Yards per carry. Uh, the passing game ranked. And the passing game, where are they? Ranked eighth in the league at 180, 181 yards per game. They had 15 touchdowns, eight interceptions, 56 com- 56 uh, percent completion rate. Passing defense, they were seventh at 203 yards per game, 18 touchdowns, five interceptions, and 55 percent completion rate. Uh, the year before, they I think they had like 15 interceptions and then in 23, they finished with five. So they, you know, they couldn't, they, their, their turnovers, they weren't, uh, they weren't able to force as many turnovers as they did in previous year. And, uh, and that kind of hurt them a little bit. And like I said, depth was probably the biggest thing for this team depth and just not being able to close out games. Uh, when you look at their return game, uh, they finished third in kickoff returns, averaging 20.3 yards per return. Punt return, they also were third at 13.3 yards per return. So very solid return units. Um, Trenton Leary and Ladarius Owens did a solid job uh, filling in for Sean Xavier Lewis um, as their return guy. So they, you know, they had weapons and they continue to have individual guys, but I don't know if they have enough to be a solid team. When you look at uh, kickoff, they averaged 39.7 yards per kickoff net. Uh, 55.5 yards per kickoff and seven touchbacks. Uh, field goals, they finished um, sixth at 11 of 18 for 61%. Extra points, they were seventh at 33 of 35 for 94%. And punting, they were eighth with a uh, 33.6 uh, net average. They averaged 36.3 yards per punt overall. So not great in that aspect but not horrible either. Uh, this, this offensive line allowed um, 23 sacks, which was sixth in the league. The defense registered uh, 26 sacks as well, which was fifth in the league. So not not a bad job, you know, protecting the quarterback. And they, they did a really good job of getting pressure on the quarterback. Like I said, they were uh, 11th in the interception with five uh, forced fumbles. They were seventh with uh, nine. And fumble recoveries, they were 10th with uh, six. So they forced 11 turnovers on the season. And, you know, when you look at that, that's, you know, that, that's tough to win when you can't, you know, when you can't take the ball away from somebody um, and you give it away. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a big issue. They were, they, they had a minus five in turnover margin. So they, they, def- they gave it away much more than they, they kept than they took it away. And they had a lot of untimely turnovers. Uh, and that, that's one of the things that hurts you, you know, fumbles late in games when you got a game basically locked up, um, you know, just bad plays here and there that just really, you know, you really just couldn't get out of their own way. And ultimately, uh, Coach McKinney's contract was not renewed. And then that was that whole uh, Fred McNair situation. And uh, then that led to Chris Dishman taking over as head coach. So it was a rocky season for TSU. From start to finish, a um, lot you know there are bright spots, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, on third downs, they were fifth at thirty six point four percent on offense. Third down defense, they were eleventh at forty two point two percent conversion rate for the opponents. Fourth down, uh, fourth down offense, they were thirty six point four percent. Only four of eleven. Uh, those eleven attempts were last in the league, so they did not. They, they were not aggressive at all on fourth downs um, and only four conversions, which also was last in the league. Uh, fourth down defense, 
They were 11th at 68.2%, 15 of 22. Uh, the opponents went for it 22 times, which was the third most in the league. So they, you know, their opponents were slight, were slightly more aggressive than they were. Um, and that, that, that changes games sometimes. Uh, red zone offense, uh, the Tigers were sixth uh, at 79%, 27 of 34, 19 touchdowns, 12 rushing, 7 passing, 8 of 11 on field goals, and 3 turnovers in the red zone, 1 interception, and 2 turnovers on downs. Defensively, they were not good in the red zone at all, 43 of 50 for 86%. Uh, that's 11th in the league, 38 touchdowns allowed in the red zone. That was the most by 11 uh, by 11 touchdowns. Uh, 26 rushing touchdowns, 12 passing touchdowns, five of eight on ex on field goals, two uh, fumbles, one interception, and one turnover on down. So four turnovers for the opponents in the red zone. Um, like I said, just you know, just a team that they had their moments, but they just could not put it together at the end of the day. And when you you know when you have those mistakes, they you know they bite you in the butt, and, and it makes it really tough for you. Um, when you look at uh, the returning, um, the top returning rushers, uh, not a, you know, not a lot there. The leader running back um, is uh, Davion Ford. He he he, the leading returning rusher. Uh, Jace Wilson is the leading passer, um, coming back with a um, thousand sixteen hundred and thirty yards, ten touchdowns, and five interceptions. The receiving core has some talent. Jaron Johnson has thirty-seven catches for. Uh, 405 yards and four touchdowns. Trenton Leary, 22 catches, uh, 339 yards. Uh, AJ Bennett is coming back from injury, so they, you know, when you look at the offense, there, there is potential there. Um, as, as we kind of fade into the 24 uh, season, there is, you know, there is potential in the passing game, and that's the unit I, I think is the best. But there, you know, where it is, there is a quarterback battle um, in Houston. Uh, so there, you know, um, Jace Wilson and, and, and uh, KJ Cooper are, are battling it out, and yeah, a lot of people right now are saying that um, Wilson doesn't have a strong hold on the job, and that that is, you know, to me that's kind of concerning. Um, but you know, when you bring in a guy who, you know, who who started. In college, you know, on a on a on a on a, on a different level, um, has you know has you know a little bit more size, you know can can run a bit, um, it, it and with a new coaching staff and new you know just new everything, new system and everything, I think that makes it, um, makes it interesting. That makes the job you know not not solidified for nobody, and that that kind of you know that kind of surprised me when I when I heard that but you know if this is a battle that is you know if, if you're going with a guy who hasn't started in any swipe games over a guy who has um that does raise a lot of questions unless that guy is just head and shoulders above the the, the returning starter uh, so that's that's kind of a question mark for me but whoever takes that job has some good weapons to throw the ball to um Finding, you know, finding that bell cow at running back is going to be important. Uh, you're losing 1,500 yards from Ladarius Owens, um, a guy who could, you know, who could tote the load and, and, and carry the ball a, a lot, or a guy who, you know, who can break, you know, break the big play, you know, in a, with a long run. So when you're losing that, and then you're losing almost 400 yards from Ja'Cory Howard, um, you know, that's almost 2,000 yards of, of offense on the ground that you're losing. So you really, you know, you really need to find somebody to fill that spot. And it may not be one guy. Uh, it may, you may, you may need multiple guys to fill, fill that spot, but that's, you know, that's a big hole on offense. The offensive line lost some key, some key contributors. So you're kind of, you know, starting fresh there. And then, like I said, it's just, you know, the unknown with a new coach and new systems. So it, it's going to be, I don't know if it's a, a total rebuild, but this is a reset for sure. So where this team ends up, you know, it, it, it's hard to tell. Uh, defensively, they need to just, to me, they need to 
continue to you know improve and, and and you know do better against the run, you know do better on third downs, do better on fourth downs. Um, there there is talent there. Um, Jacob Williams, who I think is a guy who could have been um, the uh, the defensive player of the year in the preseason, could have had a shot at defensive player of the year last season after the regular season. Um, you know that's that's a very 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 good guy on on defense. And, and you know he's a guy who I think is gonna be a big a big name. Um, you're looking at a guy with 100 and 106 tackles, uh, 18 and a half tackles for loss, and eight sacks on defense. So that's you know that's a guy who's tough. Uh, Isaiah Bargardy returns. Uh, he had um, he had eight, uh, 89 tackles. So that uh, Javis Williams also returns with 57 tackles. Uh, Simmons at 54. So you return a, a good chunk of your defense. And I think that could help this team um, early in the season if the defense can can improve and improve um, with their physicality and other guys um, step up. Um, also, uh, Aikens returns on the D-line. So, you, you know, there are some solid pieces on defense. And like I said, there's some good individual pieces on offense. I don't know if there's enough of, of that of all over the team for this team to be really competitive. Um, the West Division is wide open, so everybody has questions. You know, this is a, this could be a situation where a team can find a way to steal a game or two and find themselves in a good spot. I'm not, you know, I'm not comfortable with that right now, but I, I think it's always possible in this division. To me, the key thing for this team is depth um, on both sides of the ball, but especially defense. Can you rotate enough quality guys on your D line to keep them fresh late in games? You know, can you you know can you have guys who can you know who can fill in for Bogarty and Williams that that can you know give them a break from time to time so they they're not really gassed going into the fourth quarter? You know, can your O line rotate guys to you know to to keep defenses off of you late in games? Can you you know be able to extend the lead late in the game? Can you be able to, you know, run out the clock late in the game? You know, you you have to be able to start to play mistake-free ball uh, at those parts of the season. Um, and that's going to, to me, that's probably one of the biggest questions with this team is just the overall depth of this team. Uh, the special teams are solid. Um, Christian Avalar returns as, as the punter. Um, and um, uh, um, Gustavo Romero returns as the field goal kicker. He was four of six on field goals last season. So you 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 return two uh, guys who have played some, um, not full time guys, but now they are. Um, and the return game should be solid with Larry and then Lewis coming back from injury. You know those are guys who uh, who can be explosive. Larry averaged nineteen yards per kickoff return, and Lewis is a guy who. Is a guy who could average over 20 yards per kickoff return. So there, there is talent there, and there's a lot of speed back there. And those guys could be playmakers for this for this special teams unit. And you know, a team that's kind of struggling to you know figure out their identity and find points. Um, a solid special teams unit and a solid return game can really help you. I mean, flipping the field, getting that hidden yardage, being able to you know not even get points. Uh, in the return game, but making the field shorter for your offense um, can be a key for a team who may not be as consistent offensively um, when you, you know, when you don't really know where this team is going to be at um, in the season. So being able to start closer to the, to, 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 to the red zone and being able to maybe even score a touchdown or, or two in special teams is very vital. And that that's the difference between a good team and a bad team. So if they want to, you know, they want to take that step, uh, they need the, the special teams are definitely going to have to be um, be uh, an important factor. Moving on to the schedule for this for this season, as usual, they open up um, with Prairie View in the uh, Labor Day Classic, uh, August thirty first. PV is going to extend the streak. I mean, there's no, I don't really have any, any, any other way to put it. Um, these two teams are kind of in different directions. Last season, TSU should have won this game. Um, they were up by 17 
Um, PV tied it up, and they, you know, they just could not score the end and, and and lost. So, you know, when you play a game, this, you know, when you play a rivalry game early in the season, it can really shift the momentum of your team, um, you know, one way or the other. And new coach and everything going on the road. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a tough affair. But I, I think Prairie View wins that game. Then they come back to Houston to play Rice. Um, TSU has had some games where they've scored some points against Rice, but I don't really see it right now. Uh, Lamar is an interesting game. Um, that's a team who some people last season thought was not gonna be good, and they they were competitive throughout the season and kind of made a run at at the conference for a while. Um, they're gonna be a tough tough task on the road. Um, and I think that puts you into the JSU game at 0-3. Uh, JSU is your first home conference game. That's another, you know, that's another tough game. Uh, JSU is a team that I'm, I'm pretty high on. And I, I, I think they're going to be a team that battles for the East. So I think TSU drops that game. And then you have Virginia Lynchburg for homecoming. I understand, you know, I've been told why they do it. And I understand why, you know, they're, they're, those are the only kind of games they can play at their home field. So I understand, you know, playing a team like that for homecoming. Um, it just, to me, just doesn't really do a lot for, for you. Um, but when you a team that needs W's, um, you take them out, you can get them. So they'll, I think they'll get the win there. And then they get Southern on the October 12th. I, you know, Southern's a team I've been saying a, a lot. I don't know which way they're going to go up or down. Uh, I think this is going to be a team that's kind of in the middle. I think um, I think they have enough to get by TSU. It's going to be a tough task, but I think Southern wins that game. Um, after their bye week, um, they get Grambling at home as, as well. That's a, you know, when you look at it, they have a really, a really solid um, home, home season early with Jackson State, Grambling and Southern all at home. Um, in the in September and October, so if you want to, you know, if you want to catch a, a a game in that area, and you want to see when those teams come to town, you have three opportunities. And I think Grambling is kind of similar to Southern. Um, they should, you know, they should be able to get by TSU, but I would not be surprised if this was a tougher game than than expected. But I do think Grambling wins that game, and that sends them into November second um, at FAMU. That you know, it's always tough to win at Bragg. They they have a long winning streak at home, and I don't think it ends there. Um, they go to Alcorn, and they've beaten Alcorn two times in a row. So I, I think Alcorn is aware of this, and after the beating that that TSU put on them last season, I think that um, I think they'll you know they understand the assignment so to speak, and I think Alcorn wins that game, and that that puts you at the final two games of the season, and they play an 11 game schedule instead of 12. Um, again, I'm not a fan of playing less games than you you can. Um, if you can play 12 games, I, I think you should play 12. And if, you know, if, Especially when you only have when you have a Virginia Lynchburg as, as a non-conference opponent, you really need that extra game to me. But they play 11 games. <coughs> and their last two games are Bethune-Cookman at home and at Pine Bluff. Two games that are winnable. Um, they, by all accounts, should have beaten P- Pine Bluff last season. Uh, had a big lead, let that game go, and lost by one. Uh, they had a decent-sized lead on Bethune-Cookman, let them come back, but they won. So those are, are, are two games I think that they can win, and I, I'm putting them down for wins in those games um, because I don't know, you know, at this por- portion of the season, who knows what either one of those teams are going to be. Um, those are probably their Best two shots at our at, at wins in conference play, and I have them finishing with a record of three and eight, two and six in conference. Um, to me, it's not a lot there in terms of of, of toss ups. Um, when you look at um, when you look at that East Division opponents at Jackson State, FAMU, and Bethune, so none of those games are easy. Bethune is not going to be easy either. You know, Bethune's a team that a lot of people are, are, are really high on right now, um, but I don't, you know, sitting here right now on paper, you don't know what this team is. So I, I think that they don't have a lot of wiggle room in terms of toss-up games. So that's why I went with three and eight. Um, 
I don't see them finishing worse than two and nine because I do think they win at least they win at least one swag game. Um, one and ten is a disaster. Um, that's zero and eight in conference, and that's just a disaster. And I don't think that happens. So I think you know I think they'll be um, competitive most of the season. I don't think they're going to get blown out in very many games, if any, really. But I just don't think they have enough to win those games. So I have that that floor at two and nine. And I put that ceiling at four and seven because I think that, you know, that that's beating one of Southern or Groundland most likely. Um, I don't really see them beating both. Um, so th- if they won one, I, I I would you know I would think one of those games would be uh, the game that puts them at four and seven. Um, all that changes if they find a way to beat Prairie View. Now that you know that that's a that, that's a tough task, you know, right out the gate. But a win there. Changes a lot of changes a lot of things for this team, um, at least perception wise. So that's pro- you know I think it would take a PV loss, pre- PV win to get the five wins. Uh, but I don't see the team finishing better than three and eight. I think four and seven is possible, but it's like I said, it's really dependent on that Southern and Gremlin, um, that Southern and Gremlin stretch. Uh, if you can win one of those two. Then I think you find yourself in a good spot, but the Pine Bluff game, Bethune game are, are, are losable too. So there, to me, there is no other than Virginia Lynchburg. There is no game that I think that this team is favored in. Maybe Pine Bluff, but you know that that's kind of up in the air. I think Pine Bluff and Bethune are toss ups. Um, Southern and Gremlin, they probably um, are like uh, are like sixty five percent favorites. And everything else is, is more than seventy five percent favorites for um, for the opponents. So there's not a lot of games here that I, I can swing one way or the other. And I try really hard to kind of look and find you know find those those wins for him for them. And I just can't really find them. So with that being said, man, I, I think this is going to be a tough tough stretch uh, for Coach Dishman and his Tigers early. Um, I, I think the goal, like I said about most of these teams, I think the goal is to be competitive and to grow. Um, if you can be more competitive at the end of the season than you were at the beginning of the season, I think that's a good, good win for you. Um, everybody, you know, everybody knows wins and losses are very important, but in a situation like this, I think wins and losses aren't the most important thing uh, when you have teams that are basically starting over. Um, you have to be building your culture and building your program. So if this team is a fighter, if, if, if this team is a fighter all year, I think that's a great thing. And th- th- those kind of teams that they're scratching, fighting claw are, are the kind of teams that are still a game from somebody um, if they're not prepared. So that's to me it, it is the goal for this team is to just play spoiler and, and just, you know, be, be in it and, and see where you finish. Um, because that to me on paper, there's not a lot there, um, early to, 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 to kind of shake a stick at. So with that being said, man, I'm your tour guide around the Swag C Wells signing out. Don't forget Swag Smoke, uh, live on Thursday, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. Our Pine Bluff preview drops on Wednesday and that'll do it for us, man. I'm going to catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.